For more on this, I'm joined by Joshua Landis. He's director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Oklahoma. He was a senior Fulbright scholar in Syria in 2005, and he runs a website called SyriaComment.com. And Hisham Mellum, the Washington bureau chief for the Al Arabiya News Network. And we thank you both for being with us. Joshua Landis, to you first. Between the Annan, Kofi Annan efforts and the uh, meeting and efforts of the Friends of Syria group, do you see promise in all of this? for an end to the violence? Uh, not an end to the violence. Uh, in, in some ways, the international community is working at cross purposes because Anan is working on essentially a, uh, a surrender document for the Syrian opposition because it leaves Assad in power and it's a, uh, it calls for dialogue. The opposition has said they don't want any of it. They, they want to overturn this regime. They don't want to talk with it. And the foreign community, led by the United States, has been promising the opposition that it will beef up its support for it in order to bring down the regime. So there are messages going, you know, cross, messages that cross purposes going on here. But to a certain extent, this is positive news for the Syrian opposition. The foreign community has put them on training wheels, if you will. The foreign, the, the opposition has been very factionalized. And uh, the Syri Free Syrian Army just a, a few weeks ago called the Syrian National Council a bunch of traitors, and there have been defections from the National Council. So I think Clinton and all are very worried that they're going to invest a lot of money in people they're not sure are going to be winners. So well, they're, they're, they're giving support, but they aren't guaranteeing uh, a lot yet. They're going to, they, well, they're, in a sense, they're saying, come back in a few months and, and show us what you've got, that you've got a real leadership. Hisham Mellum, so are they working across purposes in, in your view, or do you see some positive movement here? Obviously, the Syrian opposition is working for regime change. Some Arab states are working for regime change. The United States essentially is calling on Assad to, to leave power, and the American position did not change. I think uh, those who believe uh, that uh, Assad will accept the Anan plan are few, and the opposition is convinced according to people I spoke with, and, and, and according to their public pronouncements, that he's not going to implement anything. And by the way, Judy, you know, last year, he gave the same assurances to the Turks, to the Arab League, to the United Nations. Every time such commitments are made, quote, unquote, uh, we've seen intensification of fighting. He is, I mean, people are focused now on the ceasefire. But even if you have a ceasefire, the other conditions will be practically impossible for Assad to, to implement. Is he going to release? tens of thousands of political prisoners? Is he going to allow unfettered access to the international media? If that happens, I can assure you what you will see in the streets of Damascus and Aleppo. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands probably of Syrians demonstrating, and he will be forced to shoot them. Otherwise, he will fall. So you don't see some progress here? No, I don't, think, I don't think we see some progress. I don't expect that. And I think if you read carefully what the, what, what the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has been saying and others, they are going through the process so that they will return to the Security Council once again to tell the Russians we give them another chance. And I hear from American officials that they are sensing a slight, and I underline slight, change in the Russian position. They are talking now more and more by Russian impatient with Bashar al-Assad. Do you see uh, that glimmer of hope on the part of the Russians, Joshua Landis, and do you see the difficulties that Hisham Melham is laying out here? Well, I certainly understand what Hisham Melham is, is saying, and I think he's absolutely right. I don't think the Russians are about to turn on the Syrians, nor the Chinese, nor the Iranians. Um, you know, President Assad has been pounding the Syrian opposition in the last month and a half. He believes, he stated just the other day, that the, uh, that the opposition was finished, that he was wrapping up, that he's in mopping up things. That's what he's hoping. That's why he's given the date of the April 9th. He thinks that he can beat this opposition. Now, clearly, the international community believes that de devastating sanctions, supporting the opposition, that in the long run, the, uh, you know, the Sunni Muslims are 65 percent of Syria. The Alawites are about 12 percent. That's the leading group in the military and the president. And that this is going to be decided on the part that the Sunnis are going to win. And that's a win for America. It's pro-Saudi Arabia. It's anti-Iran. Uh, it's good for the majority of Syrians. Um, so that's what they're counting on. And I think that's going to be a long, drawn-out struggle of, um, of years, because the Syrian military is still very strong. It's professional. And the people at the top are dedicated to carrying out this um, to, to, to quelling this insurgency. He so should. the United States, 
has, has a big job ahead of it in trying to get this opposition together so that it can bring down the army. So, Hisham Mellum, uh, between what you mentioned, the Ru maybe some softening in the Russian <clears throat> position, this notion that, no, the friends of Syria, they're not providing weapons, but there is money, uh, support going to the friends of Syria. Why wouldn't that begin to uh, make a difference in on the ground? Those who are arming or will likely to arm the Syrian opposition are not going to commit themselves publicly. But I can guarantee you, from what I hear from Arab diplomats, that weapons and money are pouring in, or they will be pouring in on a massive scale and, and, uh, uh, and, and in the immediate future. The United States now is, is going to provide medical aid, communication gear, and the secretary hinted, Secretary Clinton hinted, there will be intelligence information. The United States is watching the situation with their drones and their, you know, satellites and, what, and whatnot. So intelligence is extremely important, you know. Uh, uh, actionable intelligence uh, uh, helping the opposition will be extremely important for them. So what you're going to see is a protracted fight, obviously. But the regime is not as powerful as the re regime would like to maintain and to create the fiction that it is, it is uh, 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 the sanctions are biting. Uh, there are more defections. People talk about between 10 and 40,000 defectors. Uh, 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 we've seen demonstrations in the heart of Damascus, in the heart of the Syrian capital. Uh, Assad cannot preside over a failed state, uh, a North Korea-like state on the, uh, you know, uh, on the Levant. And it's a question of time. Uh, but definitely, uh, the, the Syrian opposition got, got a boost. They didn't get what they want, obviously. Right. But we're getting closer to the, to the day where, where he will be overthrown. Just quickly to Joshua Landis, Landis do you see those holes in the, uh, the armor or chinks in the armor, if you will, of the Assad regime? And what about this promise that they will stop the violence a week from tomorrow? Well, uh, they're not going to be able to stop the violence. And uh, the opposition is going to take it to the army. The Syrians are going to blame this on the opposition. They're going to say, look at how can we stop our, our duty is to bring security to the nation. We're not going to let these people shoot at us uh, and pull out of the cities. So they're, they're going to have a ready-made excuse, and this is going to go on because both sides believe that time is on their side, that they can win this fight, and they both feel uh, confident, or at least they're trying to exude confidence on both sides. So we're in for a long, protracted uh, struggle. It's going to take time for the Syrian opposition to get a, a command structure, to get the proper arms, and I believe they will pour in. And, and it, slowly, the balance of power will be brought onto the side uh, that uh, Saudi Arabia and the Americans are willing to arm, and that they will win this war in time. But it's not going to happen in a year. Joshua Landis, Hisham Mellum, we thank you both.